Hey everyone, Doug here at the Jewelry Monk Studio, getting ready to do some casting, and I just wanted to walk through what I do. Um, this particular casting is going to be in resin. So I've got a 3D printer, and I printed up a couple of pieces that I'm going to cast, and I'm just gonna kinda go through, uh, walk you through what I do to get um, successful resin casting. So first thing, I, I'm just gonna dive in you know I've got some pieces here I haven't even clipped off the uh, supports yet so I'll I'll do that and just kind of um, walk you through what I do so I'm gonna move this camera here so uh, first thing I do is I clip off the the supports on the piece so this resin is uh, b9's emerald resin uh, I have pretty good success with it and you can go in and kind of snap these um, supports off. I don't like to do that because usually what I find is if I snap them off, it leaves a small little divot in the, the piece itself that I have to go in and either fill in with wax or repair. So, so what I'm doing now is just uh, I got my, my semi-flesh cutters and I'm just kind of going in and just just uh, snapping off or clipping off the uh, little pieces. Let's see if I can show a little bit better how I do that. Uh, again, I just put that right up, right up in there. And you can see that. And then I'm just kind of clipping those off. Um, and again, I, I'd rather clip them off than snap them off because if I snap them off, then I, I get. Uh, little little divots in my piece that I have to go in and repair. So usually what I'll do is I'll, I'll clip off a number of them, about half of them, and then just kind of trim away the uh, the base just so that it's out of the way. One more sitting right there. So you can see kind of getting there. Got a few more to clip off. So there you go. There's a uh, one more to clip and comes off. So now I got all these little little nubs there and I can actually go in and, and sand them off in the resin before casting. On this piece, what I think I'm gonna do is just leave them on there and when I after I get it in casting, I got a little bit of cleanup to do on it anyway. So I'll just leave those there and then I'll finish them up, um, cleaning them up once I get it in the metal. So now what I will do is uh, add a sprue to it. So what I'm gonna use on the sprue is, this is a, a red, um, what do they call it? Uh, it's a ferrous um, round sprue. I've got a couple of them. One of them is uh, eight gauge and one of them is 10 gauge. I think on this one, I'm gonna use 10 gauge. Now the, the wax itself, let me back up a little bit here. The wax itself, it doesn't stick really well to the resin. So what I do is I use, this is uh, some sticky wax and it's actually uh, Procraft sticky wax that I use. When you open it up, it looks like those. And it, this stuff is neat, so I'll turn on my, I got my wax pen over here, turn that on. And uh, what I will do is add the sticky wax to the resin because the sticky wax is appropriately named sticky wax because it's very sticky. Whatever you uh, touch it to, it, uh, it turns kind of sticky. So on this piece, I'm actually gonna sprue it in three different areas just because with resin, you wanna kind of almost over sprue it so you can see I got one there, one there, and then one on the top. What I'm gonna do is take take this sprue, I'm just gonna bend that there, heat that up and drop it right there. And a little bit of wax to that. And a little wax to the other side. Take this and remove that there. All 
I'm just modifying a sprue right now for this piece. So now you can see I've got the, the sprue onto the piece in three different areas. Now I'm gonna take the larger eight gauge um, sprue wire and attach it to the, uh, the bottom just so it has a little bit larger feed coming in. And just right there, just didn't take much. Now I'm gonna cut this off. And then this is a blue inlay wax. I'm just going to go around the seams just to make sure that there's no gaps in the, uh, the unions around there. And there we go, that's screwed up, ready for casting. So I've got another piece here. This is just a small piece that I'm going to uh, um, throw in there as well. Again, the sticky wax to the piece so that the sprue itself has something to stick to. Just like that. And I've got a couple of these that I'm gonna cast. Turn that over. Again, the, the sticky wax is just acts as a uh, a better way for the wax because the the regular sprue wax doesn't stick to the resin as well, and I don't want the piece to break off during investing. Um, so the sticky wax just helps that from uh, from happening. All right, now I got the pieces sprued up. I actually got two of them that I'm going to do, two of those and two of the little ones. This is my um, flask base. It is a two inch by, uh, I think the flask itself is two and a half inches. I don't, I'm not using my uh, um, perforated flask. This is just a small cast, so I'm gonna use my vacuum casting. Um, so I'm just going to add the pieces to the, uh, to the, this, the, the, uh, the base here. Just take that, put that there. I got the two small ones I'm going to put in the middle and then the two larger ones I'm going to put around the outside. Make sure there's no gaps or uh, voids around the union. I'll take, take this one. I'm going to mount that one right in there. Make sure the seam is, doesn't have any voids in it. Thing about this red wax is it uh, it takes a while to set once you heat it up it's still fairly soft so you got to hold it in place for a little bit all right that's what the uh, the tree is going to look like Next thing I'm going to do is take it over to my scale and weigh it so I know how much metal to use. You can see the base weight is 48 grams. So I'll go over to the scale, make sure it's at zero, and 49.9 grams, so the difference is 1.9 grams. And then we'll 
figure out how much metal that is. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is put the, uh, the flask around the piece. Down in there, make sure it's not touching the walls, which is good. And then what I like to do is I've got these little straws and I've sealed up one end of them with wax. And what I do is I'll run the straws fairly close to the design. I mean, I don't want it touching, but I want it close enough to where it's going to add a little bit of vacuum draw and help these pieces to fill. So if you can imagine after these, this is invested, when this burns out, that's going to be like a little channel of air or channel of, um, let me give you one more here. There we go. It's going to be like a, a channel. The, the air is going to be vacuumed and pulling closer to the piece to help it fill. So it's just something that I've always done and, uh, it worked well for me. All right, to mix my investment, I've got uh, 91 cc's of water and eight ounces of investment. It's a fairly small flask, so I don't need a whole bunch. And it's so small that I'm not even really going to uh, use my mixer. I'm just gonna mix by hand. Um, the water that I'm using is a mixture of uh, powdered boric acid and water. And this is a one quart container and I mix in two tablespoons of powdered boric acid. What I do is I heat up the water, mix in the, the, uh, the boric acid and then it dissolves. And then I let that sit um, room temperature and whenever I use it, that's, uh, it's ready to go. So that's the, the mixture that I use. And you can see it's not a whole bunch, just gonna add the water. Uh, and then I'm going to add the powder, but for, for doing that, I'm going to do that off camera because I wear a respirator and uh, you can't hear me talk anyway, so. All right, now what I do is uh, take the little pins that are holding the straws out, take the, uh, the base off, and then I, I got a little scraper and what I'll usually do is, is scrape off the excess uh, investment. Just makes for a little cleaner flask. But what's really important on these is this edge here. You wanna make sure that there's no investment on that top edge because that's gonna make contact with the, uh, the casting rubber seal. And you just don't want anything in there that's going to impede that. So there we go, ready to go in the oven. On this one, I'm actually going to do a 12-hour burnout. Uh, it is the the suggested burnout from B9, um, but I've also run five-hour, six-hour burnouts and have the same results. So, um, yeah. So I'll put this in the oven and uh, 
show you the results tomorrow. So there you go, there's a, a quick overview of how I go about casting my uh, resin pieces. Uh, a few closing comments. First, um, in, in my jewelry, there's really no absolute. You're gonna run across people who say, you need to do this, you have to do that, um, you can't get by without doing this. Um, experiment a little bit, play around. Um, here's some examples of some of the pieces that I've cast lately, and I've tried different things on all of them. Uh, the majority of these, I didn't even use the boric water. I just used the straight ultra vest or satin cast, uh, whatever I had available, and um, still having pretty good results. So uh, just play around. I know that the majority of people who run across this video are probably um, looking for some quick answers because they've tried a few things and they haven't worked. So hopefully as I walk through some of these things, uh, it gives you some ideas. Uh, this is how I go about it now and I have really good results here lately. So um, to try around and experiment. Uh, what I like to do is whenever I cast or um, print some pieces, I always print a one or two extra. And whenever I'm um, doing a regular cast, I'll, I'll throw one in there, you know, and try different things with it, uh, especially if I'm doing silver or something like that, so that it's rather inexpensive to experiment. But um, try things because if, if you run a, a resin piece with wax, it's not gonna harm the wax. Um, it's kind of, uh, it's its own little, uh, subject so it doesn't bleed into the rest of the cast so there's nothing there's nothing that you can do that's going to ha harm the other pieces so um, play around uh, second thing um, one thing that is very important is the curing here's uh, a picture of uh, my printer and the curing box that I use I've tried a number of different things from boiling them in in uh, water and oil in a microwave to glycerin to um, I've even taken and put them in glass beakers and, and put them in direct sunlight for a few hours just to make sure that they're cured. So, um, the, but the curing is critical. Um, there's a number of different uh, resins out there. Um, check with the manufacturer to see what they suggest, but uh, make sure that your pieces are completely cured because if not, that will have a, a bad effect on the surface of your pieces as well. So, um, uh, curing is critical. Uh, and the last thing is, is hopefully this helped you out. Um, and if it did, um, share it, you know, share it with some of your casting friends, uh, check out all the multimedia, um, things, uh, just look for jewelry monk, or if you have more questions, you can get a hold of me at jewelrymonk.com or my consulting page, which is Doug Napier.com. Uh, that's N A P I E R. Um, and I'd be happy to help or walk you through things or, or if anything, uh, if you're in critical need, I can actually, you know, sometimes I'll go to different places and, and work with them, walk them through uh, some different processes. So 
So thanks for spending 20 minutes of your life that you're never going to get back with me. Um, hopefully this helped. If it does, leave a comment. Uh, tell me tell me how it helped, and, and uh, hopefully it did. So uh, again, this is how I go about it, and I have pretty good success. So thanks for stopping by, and uh, check out JewelryMonk.com and DougNapier.com. Thank you.